Thanks for joining us tonight at 10. I'm Marlisa Goldsmith. We try to tell you all every night just where we stand in the fight against COVID-19 here in Arkansas. The public health experts say the best way to know is to expand testing. After some false starts, THV 11's Rolly Hoyt has details on the group aiming to do it. It is time to get tested, and this time they really mean it. While the phrase, anyone who wants a test can get one, is a politically loaded phrase in other parts of the country, the nonprofit that runs clinics like this one here in Hot Springs says it'll soon be a reality in Arkansas. We stand in partnership to expand our testing efforts to we're committing to 2,000 tests a week. Lofty goals as Governor Asa Hutchinson and health officials try to get 60,000 tests done this month. But Shannon Spencer says her organization, the Community Health Centers of Arkansas, holds a key to getting there. This effort is mass testing. Uh, mass testing means anyone can actually be tested. Up until now, testing has been focused on people who had symptoms, fevers, coughs, body aches. As fears over testing supplies subsided, people who had contact with positive patients could test as well. Now Spencer says supplies are actually plentiful, and she wants to put them to use. We've been able to get supplies from a number of vendors. Um, so we've been able to work with vendors in-state and vendors with um, across the United States. They still are being cautious. An outbreak this summer could lead to another supply crunch. But now the CHCA's regional clinics want to fill in some testing gaps. And cost won't be an issue at places like Healthy Connections in Hot Springs and Mena. For those that are uninsured, we will cover the price for you to be tested. Testing is free to you. Testing sites will look similar to these that are already in place. Spencer says many out there are scared to get tested. She's vowing to reassure them while assuring the governor her group can reach the goal. Governor? And to Dr. Nate Smith, we stand in partnership and to work with you in order to address this virus that's impacting many of, of our community. Rolly Hoyt, THV 11 News. Rolly, thank you. If you're interested in being tested for COVID-19, just text the word TEST, T-E-S-T, -E to 501-376-1111, and we'll send you a list of testing locations in Arkansas, including the clinics in this new effort. Let's take a look at the numbers tonight. We have 72 new COVID-19 cases reported since yesterday. That's way lower than yesterday's spike. And ADH attributed that to testing more and more Arkansans. We also know two people have died since yesterday, bringing the state's total to 97. Some good news tonight. We have more than 3,200 recoveries, including two dozen residents and 11 healthcare workers at Briarwood Nursing Home, which saw some of the state's first cases. After a cool Tuesday, spring returned to Arkansas on our Wednesday. Thanks to sun and a suddenly breeze, temperatures topped out into the upper 70s to low to mid 80s. It was 82 in Little Rock, 84 in El Dorado, 79 in Clinton, and 74 in Harrison. Right now, it's still on the warm side. Temperatures have only cooled down into the low to mid 60s in Clinton. But we're still at 71 in Little Rock. We've got variably cloudy skies and we'll see increasing clouds tonight. We'll start off your Thursday with a lot of clouds around the area and also some patchy fog. But then we'll see more sun going into the afternoon. But we will have the opportunity of a few pop up showers and storms. And this is just the trend that will be developing going to later this week into the weekend. Rain chances will be going up. I'll let you know why and how much rain I'm expecting coming up. In a THV 11 update tonight, a Fort Smith music venue still says it plans to go ahead with a concert scheduled for this Friday, even after legal action from the Department of Health. Our Allie Lynch has more tonight on the social distance showdown. There's no scientific data that supports the risk is greater in this building or any venue similar to it. Why are we not under the same restrictions and guidelines or directives that those facilities are under. Dr. Nate Smith with the Arkansas Department of Health responds Wednesday in the COVID-19 briefing. A place of worship is, is different than a, than a concert hall. Uh, there's some similarities, but there are also some significant difference some significant differences, especially uh, that uh, you know, with this uh, event, they're expecting people from a number of different states, people who normally wouldn't come in contact with each other. And so that really increases the risk of COVID-19 
transmission. For the show on Friday, Travis McCready of the rock band Bishop Gunn plans to take the stage at Temple Live May 15th. That's three days before large indoor venues are supposed to reopen in Arkansas. The guidelines instructed by Governor Hutchinson state when reopening, their audience must be fewer than 50 people. The venue, Temple Live, is saying they will have four times that number at their concert on Friday, 229 in the 1100 seat theater. Disappointing and uh, obviously uh, uh, that would encounter some consequences if that's uh, the direction that they pursued. Those consequences could result in Temple Live's liquor license being stripped if holders interfere with the public's health or safety as it states in the cease and desist order issued. We're not trying to be difficult here. We just want to be treated fairly and with respect like you guys are. It's not a fun job what you guys are doing and this is a horrible time in our country. The world is watching. We have an opportunity to do a really good thing here for this state, the people of the state and the people of this country. I would think that the patrons, when they know that the concert should not happen under Department of Health guidelines, that they would use the good judgment and not attend. In Fort Smith, Allie Lynch, THV 11 News. We've also learned tonight that the company hired to do the lighting for the concert has backed out. The venue says it plans to hold a news conference tomorrow at 1 p.m. Oaklawn plans to reopen its casino on Monday with a few restrictions. The casino will operate at 33% of its capacity. Guests and employees will be required to wear masks at all times and guests will be limited to every other slot machine and every other chair at gaming tables. Also, a big change here. Smoking will no longer be allowed anywhere inside the facility, including the casino. Weeks into the coronavirus pandemic and still some household essentials like disinfectant wipes haven't been replenished on store shelves. What started with hoarding is now an international supply issue. Naomi Rucham tells us when we could get these items back. When the coronavirus outbreak reached American shores, consumers quickly snagged any cleaning products they could find. And months later, shelves with cleaning sprays, disinfectant wipes, and hand sanitizer are still bare. The issue is what happened in the beginning, uh, right at the start of the coronavirus outbreak, the panic buying. But supply chain expert and Syracuse University professor Patrick Penfield says that was only the first problem. What happened next was a series of international supply chain hiccups, starting with a full stop on shipments of critical ingredients from China. We're very dependent on supplies from China, especially from a, a shipment standpoint. So we had no ships coming from the ports. While big brands have ramped up production, Professor Penfield doesn't expect U.S. stores will have these products fully stocked until late summer. With wipes at stores sold out, some people are taking matters into their own hands. Of uh, general household bleach, and we're going to add that to the water. YouTube is chock full of recipes and demonstrations for DIY cleaning supplies. You start to pick it up. And in Portland, Oregon, <laughs> mom, craftswoman, and now business owner Arielle Russell is making reusable disinfectant wipes and selling them on Etsy. She's already sold out three times. And you just um, pop one out, disinfect, and then it goes through the wash and um, wash and reuse them. Stick them back in. Business has grown so much, she's hired four seamstresses, and she's expecting more orders with availability at stores still slim. Naomi Ruckham, CBS News. Our Verify team is working nonstop right now to separate facts from fear when it comes to COVID-19. Here's our Jason Puckett with a look at viral claims about the survival rate. You may have seen this image going around. Quote, here are the survival rates of COVID-19. It shows seven countries, including the U.S., and all have survival rates above 99.9%. It ends with a message, quote, maybe if we looked at it this way, we'd realize the panic is out of control. So that's the claim, but is it true? To verify, we checked the numbers kept by the CDC. Short answer, no. On Wednesday, the CDC showed 1,342,594 total cases in the U.S., and a total of 80,820 deaths. That's 6% of total cases so far that didn't survive. Meaning the claim that the U.S. has a survival rate of 99.9% .9 is false. The actual survival rate is difficult to determine right now as many of the confirmed cases are people who are still sick with the virus. 
Got other claims for us to look into? Send us an email. With your Verify, I'm Jason Puckett. Our THV11 senior shout outs continue tonight with Adrian Anderson. He's a graduate of the McClellan High School class of 2020 and will attend the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff in the fall on a full band scholarship. Congratulations to him and all high school seniors out there. If you want to nominate a senior, it's easy. Just go to THV11.com slash class of 2020 or text the word senior to 501-376-1111. The Little Rock School District announced plans for graduation ceremonies today. Each school will produce its own virtual ceremony, which will stream live on the LRSD Facebook page at their originally scheduled time and date. The ceremonies will also be on the school's websites and LRSDTV.org. The district is also exploring the possibility of an in-person celebration this summer if circumstances allow. And welcome back to my house. And as Marlisa pointed out, schools across Arkansas are doing their best to try and get done what they'd scheduled this week. As an example, Chico Elementary. This was to be Leadership Week. They had the artwork all collected. They had the music already recorded. They put it all together and made it accessible to the kids with a series of videos. And there's a message from several special guests and they reinforce the lessons these kids have been studying about being good leaders all year, all based on Stephen Covey's The Seven Habits of Highly Successful People, the kids' version, which is called The Leader in Me. And I swear to you, I think our governor has read the book. You witness a lesson every weekday afternoon at 1.30 on THB 11. He systematically defines a reachable goal that we all understand, gives us the process on how we get there, and then tells us how we all enter into the picture. Oh yeah, there have been stumbles, and as we've mentioned tonight, there have been controversies, but you end up knowing where we stand. For instance, in May, as we mentioned, 60,000 COVID-19 tests, that's the goal. You watch tomorrow. He will tell us how we're gonna get there, where we stand, and where you enter the picture. In Stephen Covey's book, this is called when you do something you say you're going to do and do your very best to get there, it's called integrity. And that is a key ingredient to being a good leader. Ask the kids at Chico Elementary. They'll tell you. They know. We'll be right back.